All right, welcome to week six, video 14. Um, when, now we're starting in on the middle section of the course, in the middle section of the book. And so a big focus of what I want to talk about here is um, how he knows, how, De how Matthew Desmond knows the things that he, he's saying, right? Um, so a lot of what we're going to be doing here is what we call in philosophy epistemology. Epistemology is the study of knowledge, what it is and how to get it. And um, it's been something that philosophers have been studying since whenever, whenever philosophy crops up in any civilization, people begin to ask, well, how do we know anything? And how can we know it better? So um, a lot of what I'm going to be doing here is just presenting some fairly simple ideas in epistemology and philosophy of science, some bits of uh, logic and statistics, um, just to help you think critically about a lot of the sociological claims Matthew Desmond is making. So in his book, he's always working on two levels. He's telling the story of individuals that he knows, um, that he's met, that he's lived with, and he is also um, giving you statistics and actually conducting his own statistical investigations into the nature of uh, the housing market in Milwaukee and poverty in Milwaukee. So for this section, I want to spend more time focusing on that latter activity. So uh, I'm going to be focusing right away on a particular kind of claim that he makes that comes up frequently. And normally we just think of these as statistical claims or numbers, right? But I want to break them down a bit more um, uh, particularly. The kinds of statements that Desmond is making that we're going to be concerned with now are what we call quantified categorical statements. Um, and these are, this is something that actually logicians and philosophers have been studying forever. Um, but a quantified categorical statement is just a statement that has two categories um, and a quantifier. So a, it, we'll take this item by item. This is a statement that's quantified. That means it contains a word or a phrase denoting number or quantity. So this could be a precise number like 37.3 or um, something vague like all, most, some. Then there are going to be categories. Um, the statement contains a word or phrase denoting a kind of thing like Canadians or battles in World War II. And finally, the statement that we're dealing with is a statement. And so if you go back to what we, were, what we saw when we, looked, uh, we were doing some of the basics of argument, we learned that a statement is a unit of language that can be true or false. So uh, think about this uh, statement. 92% of Canadian adults own a cell phone, right? So it's got a quantifier, 92%, and then two categories. We're going to call them F and G. Um, and these are Canadian adults and people who own a cell phone. So a property and a category for our purposes are going to be the same, right? So any quantified categorical statement um, contains a Q, an F, and a G. So here's one from Matthew Desmond. The majority of poor renting families in America spend half over half their income on housing. Uh, that's from page four. So the quantifier is the majority. I guess that means at least 51%, greater than 50%. Um, the category F is poor renting families in America. And the category G is um, people who spend over half their income on housing, right? So when we look at our Fs and our Gs, we are actually going to think about this. Now I'm going to draw on some basic ideas from statistics. We're going to talk about them in terms of 
variables and values. So f is a ver uh, will be a variable. Um, that is, it, 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 it represents, it can, uh, it can take other value. A a here, a variable is just a thing that can take values, basically. So a variable is a property of individuals in a population, and the values are the different forms that property can take. So um, when you do elementary probability theory, they love to talk about um, urns full of balls that are different colors. So you can think of color as the variable and the values for the variable are red and green. You go back here, poor renting families in America is um, our category F. And we could break this down into lots of subcategories, poor people, renting people, families, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to say our category is, uh, our, our property is being a poor renting family in America, and our values are just yes or no, right? And the same for G. Um, you could have a value here that is the percentage of income that you spend on housing. That would be a number between zero and 100. But here we're just going to, our, our, our variable is people who spend over half their income on housing, families that spend over half their income on housing, and the values for that are going to be yes or no. <clears throat> when we have, when we, when we use quantified categorical statements, we are creating models of the world. And in uh, the next video, I'll talk more about what models are um, and why they're important for understanding science. We're going to draw on something called the semantic view of theories and the work of a philosopher of science named Ron Gire. In the meantime, I just want to talk about three different kinds of things that we do once we have quantified categorical statements. So the easiest is just to say, uh, is to talk about a distribution. A distribution model is a, is a statement, in this case, that represents how common a trait is in a population, right? So we use a distribution model to resent, represent the portion of people in eviction court who are, for instance, black women, right? Um, so uh, in the quantified categorical statement, 75% uh, of people in eviction court are black women. Um, you, that single quantified categorical statement gives you a distribution of a trait in a population, um, right? So that's the simple thing. The next step up is a correlation model, right? Um, a correlation model actually involves two quantified categorical statements because it's actually a correlation is a relationship between two distributions. And that might uh, seem jargony or hard to get your head around, but once we practice it a bit, it actually, I think, will seem fairly simple. So um, one correlation that Desmond points out is that having children in your family makes you more likely to be evicted. This then involves two quantified categorical statements. One describes um, the percentage of families that have children and the, or households that have children, and the other describes the uh, percent of households uh, that are evicted or have a forced move. And the correlation is a relationship between those two percentages. Ultimately, what we're looking at, what we're looking for, and we'll go into more detail about this in the next video, are causal models. So normally when you see statistics reported, what you see reported are correlations. And the correlation is just a difference between two numbers. The implication generally is that there is causation here that one, the presence of one trait is causing the presence of another trait. So we might think that the presence of children 
causes you to be evicted. Um, that causal c claim is different than the correlation claim. Um, you've probably heard at some point in college the, 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 the statement correlation is not causation. And some of that is what we're going to be talking about here. We're going to be talking about the relationship between correlation and causation and a little bit of how you move from correlation to causation. So the important thing, though, um, and the final lesson here is just a correlation is a relationship between two variables. So your next exercise um, is going to be to take um, three quantified categorical statements from Desmond, um, analyze them, identify the quantifiers in the two categories, your Q, your F, and your G, and talk a bit and, and talk about how he knows it. Um, and that's the basics of epistemology. We're just trying to figure out what exactly the claim is and how he knows it. And so to figure out how he knows it, you're going to have to um, nose, uh, you know, nose around in the footnotes. And sometimes it will turn out that he, he is citing uh, statistics that other people have gathered. And sometimes it turns out that he's citing statistics that he and his team have gathered themselves. And so that's just something you need to explain in the exercise. Great. Thank you.